at AstraZeneca and without in any specific order, I'm going to start with Terrence Powell. So Terrence Powell, most of you have met him already um, in Atlanta, if not in LA. Terrence Powell is an award-winning sales leader, certified coach, and community leader with over 30 years of experience building teams and developing people. This is his passion. Terrence specializes in leadership development and change management. Over the years, he has experience in operations, learning and development, and market access. Terrence is a two-time recipient of AstraZeneca's Leadership Excellence Award, three-time Circle of Excellence winner, and a two-time finalist of Sales Operation Commercial Excellence Award. Terrence lives in California, and we have the pleasure of having him as our sponsor for the West Area NSN LA chapter, um, as well as our West Area Employee Resource Group, AHBRG, which stands for African Heritage Business Resource Group. So welcome, Terrence, to the webcast. Our next leader is Sumner Madden. Sumner leads AstraZeneca's U.S. Access Services and Reimbursement Division and, provide, and provides um, a division that provides patient and provider access, affordability, reimbursement, and clinical services for AstraZeneca's portfolio of medicines across oncology, cardiovascular, renal, and metabolic, respiratory, and immunology therapeutic areas. Sumner has over 19 years of specialty pharmaceutical market access industry experience with previous roles at Covance Market Access Services, amongst others. He has supported over 25 products, 15 specialty drug launches, spanning over 18 disease states. Wow. Sumner has a passion for developing an organizational culture of exceptional customer experience, innovation, and talent in order to achieve optimal patient outcomes and drive business performance. Sumner is an alumni of Hampton University. Next up is our panelist, Quincy Lee. Quincy is the Senior Director, Regional Payer of Health Systems Market Access. He leads the regional account team who works with cross-functional partners that drives results with an understanding of customer segments, accounts, and regional market dynamics. Quincy is a proven leader with significant experience in driving results that impact large business segments, regional health plans, Medicaid, IDNs, and federal accounts. Quincy has strong multiple industry experience in biologic sales, marketing, training, sales leadership, key account management, regional payers, and the list goes on. Quincy has over 25 years of experience with previous roles at Amgen, Daiichi, Johnson & Johnson, and with payers such as Kaiser and Blue Cross Blue Shield. Quincy is coming from all the way from alumni, North Carolina a and another HBCU in the house. Welcome panelists. So thank you all for being here today. Um, inclusion and diversity is a really important part of AstraZeneca. Um, and I am going to introduce you to our HR business partner, Darian Stevens. Darian, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Nicole. So good evening, everyone. My name is Darian Stevens, and I'm the Talent Acquisition, Inclusion, and Diversity Coordinator here at AstraZeneca. Um, so I bring you greetings from the talent IND side. Um, so pretty much my role here at AstraZeneca is to get the company um, in the face of more diverse candidates um, to continue to meet our goals of developing and strengthening our pipeline. Um, so this year, we are a proud sponsor of the LA, Philadelphia, and Atlanta NSN chapters, and we were also a proud sponsor at the NSN conference this year. And we definitely look forward to next year's conference and also partnering with you all um, for events to come. This year and moving forward, AstraZeneca is committed to attracting and retaining diverse leaders in our overall talent pipeline. Through our continued support with organizations just like NSN, we will continue to attract and retain the best talent in supporting our IND initiatives. So here on the screen, um, you see our values and inclusion and diversity plays into each and every one of these. So uh, we follow the science, we put patients first, we play to win, we do the right thing, and we are also entrepreneurs. What? 
And Nicole, I will hand it back over to you to talk about the um, therapeutic areas that AstraZeneca supports. Sure. Thank you, Darian, for sharing that about inclusion and diversity. Um, AstraZeneca is a large um, biotech company uh, with our focus on our main therapeutic areas and key platforms, which consist of oncology, cardiovascular, renal, and metabolism, respiratory and immunology, vaccines and immune therapies, and also rare disease. So we cover a broad spectrum of disease states and Sumner handles them all, as does Quincy. All right, next slide. So our workforce, again, to Darian's point, is all about inclusion and diversity. AstraZeneca has made a commitment this year from 2022 to 2023 to put a real big focus on this area, to empower inclusive leadership, to foster an environment where we speak up and speak our minds and build a sustainable, diverse, and talent pipe pipeline. So we know a lot of companies are focusing on inclusion and diversity, and this is why it's important. As you can see on the screen, inclusive companies are 120% more likely to hit financial goals, and eth ethnically diverse companies are 35% more likely to perform better. So it's important that we're here today to speak to you and to share and show you um, what AstraZeneca is committed to as it relates to inclusion and diversity. So we'll get go ahead and get started over into our program, and we thank you for the um, your attention today. So we picked a piece of the pie. The piece of the pie stands for performance, image, and exposure. It's by the book from Harvey Coleman titled Empowering Yourself, The Organizational Game Reveal. So the question is, why do some people, some people's career progression seem to like just take off? It goes upward, it steadily moves. You see people receiving opportunities all the time. While then there's others of us who could potentially be putting in a lot of performance, but we're just not getting the jobs. We're not getting access. We're not getting tapped on the shoulder for opportunities. So according to Harvey Coleman, these three key elements, performance, image, and exposure are all important key metrics into that. And as you can see from the slide, it's not about performance, it's more about exposure, but all of those pieces work have to work together in order to be a successful pie. So performance is really about what you do on a, on a daily basis. How do you perform at work? Your image is the impression that others have of you and exposure is a combination of both and having people being able to see your performance and your image. It's not just enough to have just one. So today our panelists will walk you through each of the three pieces of the pie in depth, share their own experiences, what has proven to work for them and for others and key tips to making sure how you can show up at work as a whole pie or with the whole pie. So I'll turn it over to Terrence as he kicks us off with performance. Uh, thank you, Nicole. Um, and good afternoon, good evening, uh, NSN LA. I'm absolutely thrilled uh, to be with you guys this evening. Um, you know, I've been uh, a part of a little bit of that journey that Therese was talking about before in terms of the stop start with NSN LA. And I am so thrilled uh, that you have this leadership team in place and that we have an opportunity to work with you guys here. Uh, between myself and my colleagues that are here, uh, our goal is to be a support uh, for the membership of NSN LA. And my particular piece of the pie this evening is performance and the three A's of formula for peak performance. I would say that given the fact that we've got uh, a group of sales professionals that are uh, on the line right now, I think it goes without saying that we all understand the importance of peak performance and consistency of performance over time. But I got to be honest with you, when I was exposed to this pie concept and I saw that only 10% of the pie was performance, I was taken back a little bit simply because as an individual that's been doing this for a long time and someone that takes extreme pride in uh, the performance that I de deliver consistently over time, like I, it's something that I wear as a badge of honor, um, I was like, man, like only 10%. However, when I reflected and I thought about my own career, and I would say that if you ask people that know me, I am known for delivering performance. 
But it wasn't until I wrapped these other elements of exposure and image around the performance that I've been delivering consistently over time that my career took on a whole different trajectory. I, be, be, I began to have opportunities to take on increasing levels of, of responsibility. And that is no way meant to discount the importance of performance because at the end of the day, uh, we have to deliver performance. It is a gateway to the other things that we wanna do in our career if we so choose to do those things. And there's nothing wrong with being a sales professional, a career professional, but if you have aspirations to do other things, to be a leader of people, to go in other departments, these elements of exposure and image become a really, really important part of it. So I'm not gonna get into that because my portion and where I'm gonna focus is really around uh, performance. And I put together a little bit of a combination, an algorithm, if you will, called the three A's formula for peak performance. And so I'm gonna start with awareness, I'll go through action, and I'll go through accountability. So let's just start off with awareness. And as you guys heard, I've been in the game for a long time. And one of the things that really amazes me is how often you talk to sales professionals and they don't have a clear understanding of what it is that they're trying to accomplish. So the first piece under awareness is just knowing your goal. Having a clear understanding of what it is that you're trying to accomplish really helps you to clearly define what it is that you need to do in order to get there. And as a, a leader of a team right now, sitting here at this moment in time, I can tell you exactly what my goals are for this quarter. For one of my brands, my market share goal is 49.28%. And for another brand, it's a volume goal and it's 3,419 units per week. And I think that's super, super important. As a matter of fact, for this week, I came up a little short on that 3,419. 3, I only hit 3,303. But the understanding of what that goal is and where I am relative to that goal allows me to make adjustments as I move forward. And I'll get into that in just a little bit. I think from an awareness st standpoint, another thing that is really, really critical for us is having an understanding of yourself. And the reason why I think that is important, right? Understanding not only what it is that you are good at, but also having a clear understanding of where the opportunities and perhaps the gaps are for you as it relates to capabilities or knowledge or those things can really, really be important in helping you as you make progress towards your goal. And I'll share a little bit more about that in just one second. Also under the awareness piece, the final bullet pun under awareness is really having a keen understanding of your customer, knowing what your customer likes, what they dislike, and probably most importantly, what it is that their needs are and what are the obstacles to them actually getting their needs met. When you're equipped with those things, it allows you to position yourself or the products and service that you, services that you offer as a customized solution to the things that they need uh, in order to meet their goals. So that wraps up a little bit about the awareness piece. Now, armed with this information, this awareness, this knowledge of, of your goal, yourself and your customer, it moves us to the next step of the three A's in the formula for peak performance. And that's all around action. And the action piece is really where we start to build out the framework of the things that we need to do in order to make progress towards our goal. And this is about making sure that you have a very specific plan and some very clear steps that you're gonna take that are gonna get you there. Understanding the target audience, and this also builds off the idea of understanding your customer, but goes a little bit deeper because I think in a lot of the situations we are targeting organizations or we're targeting individuals that have support mechanisms or support personnel around them and understanding who those individuals are and how we can go about influencing them in a way that strategically influences the end user or the end customer is an important part to understand as we build out our action steps. The last piece under action brings us to resources. This could be uh, financial resources that you need. In our businesses, pharmaceuticals, we leverage samples, we level promotional resources um, and understanding what those resources are, what my needs are and how to apply them uh, towards my customers become a really, really important uh, aspect of helping us drive peak performance. Now I said I would come back to this element of knowing yourself. And one of the things I take a ton of pride in is my ability and my willingness to collaborate. 
And so when I go back to this piece of really understanding yourself and understanding where you're, where, what you're good at, but also understanding where you have uh, gaps, strategic partners or other folks that can support you are a tremendous resource. And one of the things I've done over the course of my career is having an understanding of myself and where I have opportunities, where I have gaps and identifying strategic partners that I can work with, right? That I can bring along with me or I can tap in for knowledge and understanding is a great way for you to leverage your resources and help you to start make steps towards your, uh, towards your goals. And then finally, the last A in the three A's to peak performance is really around accountability. And I will tell you again, and being in this game for a long time, I can't tell you the number of times I've encountered individuals when I ask them, what's your plan, right? And they start rattling some stuff off and I'd be like, well, where is the plan? Can I see the plan? And so what I would say in terms of accountability, it is really, really important for you to have a written plan. And the value of having a written plan comes in a number of things, right? It's a place where you can actually capture where your goals are, where you can capture where those step, what those steps are that are required for you to, to take action and get you closer to your goal. It allows you to be able to take inventory of what your resources are and where you're actually applying those resources. And most importantly, I think, is when it's written down, it allows you, as long as you keep it in front of you, to revisit what your plan is on a frequent basis. And the value of revisiting the plan is it's human nature that we're going to drift a little bit but when you have it written down and you revisit and you can take inventory of whether or not you're making progress toward the things that you said you wanted to do it's an eye opener sometimes because what you will learn is maybe i've drifted or maybe some of the original steps that i actually identified on the front end may not be the right steps and this is where the refocus opportunity comes in, right? If you've got it written down and you visit, revisit it frequently, it gives you an opportunity to course correct and refocus and reapply your, um, your resources and your energy towards the things that are gonna propel you towards your goal. And so that is a quick, not intended to be all inclusive of some steps that actually can help to lead you to peak performance. Now I'm gonna throw in one last thing here that I found that's been really uh, effective for me and it bleeds into a little bit of this overall pie because one of the things that I do and I do frequently is I try to make sure that I share my plan with not only my boss, but other people that I think can, can support me. And I think there's a couple of things around this that are important. Not only does it build accountability, right? But it also starts the process of exposing your work and your talents to other people. And as Quincy gets into his element, one of the things he's gonna talk about is who knows you and who knows your work. And I think by exposing what it is that you're doing to other individuals, it starts that process and starts to build on other pieces of the pie. So I hope you guys found some value in this. It's again, a pleasure to be with you. I'm gonna turn the mic over to my man, uh, Sumner, to give you a little bit more round image. Sumner, over to you, my friend. Thanks, Terrence. That was uh, excellent. I, I'm pumped up. I got the three A's. I know what I'm going to do starting next week. Uh, I really appreciate that insight. One of the things that uh, is special for me about joining this call, and I don't know how many people know this, but I actually grew up in LA. Uh, I grew up in the San Fernando Valley, went to elementary school out there. And so I'm always appreciative to get, either get to spend time back in California or with colleagues out there. Um, so your personal brand image. This is what I'm gonna speak a little bit about. Uh, and I thought I'd spin it a little bit in terms of how I look at maximizing opportunities in the environments that we're in. And I remember early on in my career, someone pulled me aside and said, hey, you know, do you know how that just went? That encounter, that interaction that you just had? And I was like, hey, it went great. And he was like, no, no, no. So let me pull you, let me, let me help you understand how the other people perceive that interaction or that encounter that help you along. And this is one of my early mentors in my career. And so if you think about, you know, how to maximize opportunities in this environment that we work within, you gotta really realize that managing your perception is a full-time job. It should, it should be something that you're very deliberate about and something that you put plans in place to achieve and continuously improve. You can go to the next slide. So the way I'm gonna approach this is think of yourself as a stock. 
So this is how I think about myself. I am me on the NASDAQ. And as a publicly traded company and I'm seeking investors, if you think about it that way, I'm seeking advocates, right? I'm seeking followership. I want to do all the things necessary to raise my stock. Uh, and so think about it in terms of what do you do as a public company? You gotta do your marketing, you gotta do your R&D, you gotta do your competitive intel. And I'm gonna keep it simple in those three buckets to just talk about how do you manage perception how do you maximize opportunity? And how do you make sure that every little step you take, you're creating the perception that you want others to have of you? Uh, and so that's where I'm going to focus. So let's talk about marketing. Um, these are some basic blocking and tackling things, but you'd be surprised how if you don't uh, spend a little bit of time maximizing these things, it could be something that you didn't even realize would hamper you. So Web presence is something simple these days, right? Everywhere that your face, your identity, your name shows up anywhere in the public sphere, you should have that as tip top, top notch as it can be. You want that, anyone who sees that to see, wow, that's an interesting person. I want to meet them. What, what do they have to, to, to tell me? What can I learn about them? Um, and that goes internally with your companies, right? So I look through the company web pages to see about, you know, employee backgrounds, career profiles goals, development plans, and things like that. So if that, all that stuff isn't tight within your own company, uh, you're doing yourself a disservice. So make sure that that is all top notch. And then when it comes to your communication style and how you, how you relate to other folks in your work environment, make sure that uh, you, you do your due diligence on your tone, on the way that messages are composed, particularly if you are uh, going to be presenting information, if you're going to be communicating technical details, if you're going to be relaying important information, there's actually very specific guidance on how to, how to prepare these communications in a way that hits up front with what you want people to get and then gives detail down below. I'll never forget, I attended a training once and basically it was all about how the brain works and how most people check out after like 13 seconds of looking at information or listening to information. And so make sure that you're adopting the most recent communication styles that, that maximize the input of your messages, both written, verbal, and otherwise. And then, you know, and as being an inclusive leader, we always want us to be our authentic selves. So be yourself, have some style. What do people want to, what do you want to be known for when people think about you? So Never, never try to hold back and don't be authentic, but also make sure that that style that you're conveying is one of super urgency, ultimate professionalism, a get her done type of person, but maybe somebody that, that makes me laugh a little bit, or maybe somebody that always says something that gives me something to think about, right? But somebody that always comes prepared with some questions that, that were difficult questions and I actually had to think about a research. So never drop your style, always have that, who you are, what brings you mojo. Um, but also make sure that, you know, you convey it in the, in the best professional light. So marketing is a big deal, right? You want people to always know, wow, this person that I encountered, they had it going on. What I read about them, what I read from them, what I learned from them was something interesting and new. All right, if you're a public company and you're trying to maximize opportunities, what are you doing on the R&D front? So what Terrence was talking about in terms of knowing your customer and all that, I think that was fantastic guidance. Um, you're probably looking to achieve greater impact or more opportunities outside of your direct management line. So who are those stakeholders that you're trying to engage with? Who are the ones that are influential in the decision-making that impacts your career? And so what you can do is something very simple that I've adopted every time I go into a new role or a new business organization, do some influence mapping, figure out who's who, figure out who has what levels of influence, figure out who is going to be the ones that you need to spend more time on, less time on. Um, that's something simple that we all can do and it's really impactful. In terms of uh, key messages, so once you know who you wanna get to and you know how they can influence your opportunities, then you have to make sure you, you're gonna say something or deliver information that resonates with them, that makes them wanna engage, that makes them want to provide more information or pull you into something that maybe you weren't gonna get it pulled into. So everything I'm describing is some deliberate actions that we all could take um, to just make our interactions more impactful. That goes with the collateral development. So you'd be surprised how many conversations I have. Someone wants to talk about my organization. Someone wants to learn about a role. 
and they just come and they just ask me questions. Where had they come prepared, like Terrence said, write it down, have a plan, have a, a something they want to show me, have some pre-read information where they've done their due diligence. Collateral development is something that goes a long way. It, it shows people that you were thoughtful, you were prepared, you put effort into it. And that makes them more impressed, want to engage. And then feedback. So we're on the R&D bucket. How do you know how others perceive you? Unless you ask. <laughs> so you have, to, you have to be a little, uh, you can't be risk averse. I'll put it like that. And you have to seek out input from people that you've engaged with, from stakeholders that you've spent the time being deliberate to uh, engage and deliver some key messages and ask them, hey, how did that go? My goal in meeting with you was to do A, B, or C. Or the goal that I had for delivering this content or information for you, for you was to get you to be able to understand X, Y, or Z. Did I hit the mark? How did that go? Was there something I could have done differently to make sure that you left with everything you needed? So ask, ask, ask. Don't be shy. Usually people want to help. Uh, and you won't know where you need to adjust or um, probably dig deeper unless you find out, unless people give you that feedback. And then the last thing I'll say is about competitive intel. So this is where you should use every tool, trick, and opportunity you can that's in the book. Why recreate the wheel when the wheel is already out there, right? So uh, what are others just like you seeking to do? What are, what, where are they showing up? How are they showing up? Um, what are the things that you see other folks doing that you could say, hey, I can adopt that. That went over well. Wow, look at all the recognition, praise, X, Y, Z they got. Um, and in that same line, I would say, look at who is doing really, really well. If Terrence is a you know multiple award-winning sales leader, and I want to be a multiple award-winning sales leader, I'm going to pick his brain. I'm going to sort of study him. I'm going to understand how he leads his team. I'm going to talk to his team. I'm gonna figure out like everything I can about what's the winning formula uh, and what's creating that perception that Terrence is his leader that people gotta have on their squad, right? So that positive perception of others, to me, that's just being really intelligent about, hey, there's data out there that I can use to, that can adopt behaviors, I can adopt actions or thought processes, and then put that into play in my own perception management. So high level, that's what I think about perception. You have to be deliberate. It is part of your job if you're seeking to maximize opportunity. Um, and it goes hand in hand with performance. And we're gonna turn it over to Quincy now and he's gonna talk about image. Sorry, exposure. <laughs> I had image, but I, I think of it as perception. <laughs> yeah, you know what, it, it's so interesting because I think about image as part of exposure. Right. Um, and, and so it, and so I have exposure. So uh, this is uh, very interesting for me because um, what they didn't say in my bio is that I'm I'm an old school NSN myself. So I uh, was uh, one of the very early members of the Atlanta chapter. So been a part of NSN for an, at least 25 years and currently part of the Charlotte chapter of NSN. So um, so very happy to be here. Um, yeah. So I, I have exposure. And, uh, and for me, exposure is critical, right? I mean, as we saw earlier, um, you can have the whole piece of the pie, but exposure makes up the, the bulk of it, right? 60%. Um, and, and to me, is where I see people fail or have the most difficulty in navigating their career is truly around the exposure piece. Um, I mean, they, 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 they're prepared, you know, they do good work, but they never get promoted or they never advance in their career because of the lack of exposure. Um, and, and, and exposure makes up a couple of different components, right? Uh, and I'll speak to those um, pretty succinctly um, in, in how I see them. And, and, and I always say, and Terrence and, and Sumner know this, right? And I'm just gonna be transparent. They know I'm really transparent, probably too transparent times, right? Uh, I, I've been at AZ for four years and I've been promoted four times. And people ask me all the time, like, how in the world does that happen, right? How do you get promoted every year? And some of that's exposure, right? And so, um, and, and everything else that I think Terrence and, and, and Sumner talked about, but that exposure piece has been really, really critical for me, my career, my career growth. Um, some of the key elements of exposure that we'll talk about is visibility, uh, sponsorship, 
mentorship. We'll talk about the difference. Uh, and then reputation. Uh, so some of some of jumping to, to visibility. Uh, the first part of it for me is just being visible, right? Um, and that means, you know what, getting the proper visibility for your work and for yourself. And, and when I say that, I mean, what happens is a lot of times we go into a role saying, hey, you know what, I'm going to do the best job ever. Put your head down. That's one of the worst things right here. I got my head down. I'm just working really hard. Yeah, you better put your head up so you can see what's around you, right? Sometimes visibility is around also being getting yourself visible to people around you, right? Doing good work. Is your work respected? Are you respected, right? Some of the things I and I, I kind of wrote down around visibility is, hey, you know, are you speaking up in meetings? Um, or do you come to meetings prepared to speak up? Um, literally, when I see the agenda for a meeting, I start thinking about what questions may come up, what potentially, um, you know, topics that could arrive that I could that I can ask, hey, you know what, based on the, the topic or who's on the agenda, I may say, you know what, I'm going to speak up very early in this meeting because I know I have a really good question or I will may wait to the end because it may get answered or I may sum it up. And so be visible, right? Speak up. Um, I think that's really important. Uh, another thing is, is asking for high visibility projects. I always say people remember people that are doing stuff, right? And within the organization, there's always somebody you're always asking, hey, how's this person on that project? Usually because they're raising their hand or they're looking for those opportunities, right? And so I think it's important to look for those high visibility projects. Um, volunteer, volunteer yourself for, to represent your team. There are a lot of things that are usually going on in the organization. And all of us as leaders, we know we like to delegate stuff, right? And what happens, we tend to delegate things to people that are usually volunteering or people that have proven themselves that we know can get the job done. If, you be, if you're one of those two, trust me, you're going to get visibility within the organization. So volunteer to represent your team anytime there's any type of projects. Um, look for additional learning opportunities. Right, learning opportunities allow for you people in, in other parts of the organization to see you, right? To see what you're doing, um, demonstrate your expertise, right? If there's something that you know that you can do really well, speak up, share it. Um, and I think the most important thing around visibility that I see is that we have to highlight it. If you can't tell your own story, nobody else is going to tell it. That's in my theory, right? So you, some, there are times where you have to be able to highlight the things and achievements that you've done in your career that year. Hey, you know what? Look at Terrence. He just highlighted what he did last week with his sales results, right? He wasn't happy with him. But you know what? I, at least I know he's going to do something about it next week. So he, so to me, it's all around you know, sharing because that creates visibility as well. Um, but visibility is critical to me, I think, as you're thinking about how you're navigating your career because how others see you, um, if others see you, is going to be critical because what it does, it provides people to start thinking about your name or having conversations about you when you're not around, right? Because they they remember you, they see you, they know your work, right? They hear from you a lot. So I, I say, as you're navigating your career, you're thinking about exposure, visibility is going to be critical. The second one for me is sponsorship. Uh, and sponsorship is gaining advocacy, um, which is, cru is crucial to your career, right? Um, and I always say, look for positive sponsors and develop trustworthy mentors. I, I separate mentors and sponsors, by the way, right? I think that, you know, in your career, a lot of people will go out and look for a mentor. If you don't have a mentor, I highly recommend that you get a mentor. Mentor to me is someone who's going to challenge you. They're going to be there to help you grow. They're going to help you think about things a little differently. But more importantly, they're going to hold you accountable to your career. Um, to me, I think for a mentor uh, or, or people that you tend to lean on, you tend to go to when you have you know, challenges, when you're having success and maybe you need to get to another level, those are the people that you want to reach out to. Um, always question who your mentors are, right? They may not be within your organization. Right. Also, your mentors may not look like you. I always say I see a lot of times where people have their mentors and every single one of their mentors tend to look like them or feel like them. 
right? Sometimes your mentors may be completely different than you, right? Different backgrounds, different ages. One of my mentors right now is 20 years younger than me. And it's one of my best mentors. I'm learning so much from this person. Um, but it's important because what makes it um, really important for you know, my career growth is that the mentorship is based off of trust um, and is genuine. I always say mentorship should be genuine. A lot of times I see organizations force mentorships and they never become genuine, right? To me, it's important to really identify and have genuine mentorship. And then the other side of that, and, and this is critical, is having positive sponsorship. I, I say positive sponsorship because I, I see that as those people that are in the organization that are advocating for you when you're not in the room. That is sponsorship. Sponsors are the folks that are saying, hey, you know what? I can vouch for uh, Nicole. I can vouch for Sumner, right? I, I know their work. I know what they can do in this role and in the next role. Um, more importantly, um, when it's time for you to look for other opportunities, those sponsors are there having conversations, speaking on your behalf of your good work, and they're the exposure that keeps on giving when you're not there, right? And so really identify and ask yourself, do you have a sponsor? And, and if the answer to that is no, and the first thing is, hey, I always hear as I'm mentoring people is, hey, where do I go get a sponsor, right? I think a lot of times you... And your sponsor doesn't have to be your mentor, by the way. Sometimes they can be two different people. Sometimes they can be the same. But if you don't have a sponsor, I think the first thing is uh, evaluate, number one, your visibility, right? Are, are, are you visible in the organization? Um, and do you start looking around and saying, hey, you know what? Who can be potential sponsors, right? Speak up. Start asking people about their roles. What do they do every day? Um, and, and you heard uh, both Sumner and Terrence talk about it. When you come, come prepared, know, ex have great questions. Um, we, people that I tend to sponsor are people that, I, I, that even challenge me, right? And sometimes I learn from, and I say, you know what? This person is gonna be great for the organization um, and they have a long runway. So as you're thinking about sponsorship, start looking around, getting to know people that are in other parts of the organization, in your parts of the organization, other sales leaders potentially, and start asking, you know what, you know, who is my sponsor? And don't be afraid to identify and start asking for sponsorship. That, that's critical to your success. I see a lot of times where careers get stagnant because of lack of sponsorship. Um, they have great mentors, but just don't have the sponsorship. Um, the last one is uh, reputation, right? And, and I always say, you know, and as, I, as I'm mentoring people, I would just ask questions like, well, and I keep it real, like, who know, who, you know, who, who knows about you? You know, or, or who, in the who in the company do you know, right? And so to me, I think it's important that people had know about you and you know people within your organization. And, and, they, and they respect you. You know, and, and to me, that is getting to know different people, um, starting to reach out to people that are may not be in your circle. I think that's really big, right? Or interacting with people you normally don't interact with, right? And other parts of the organization or even other parts of your team. Um, for example, right? Reputation says that me and Sumner, even though it's late at night, we'll put our reputation on the line and come out here to the West Coast and talk to people on the West Coast and get to know you guys, right? Um, and hopefully we'll get to know and meet some people over out here in the West and that'll expand our network. Um, and all of this to me is around how do you get to know more people, expand your network, right? And, and grow who you are as, as, as a team player within your organization. I always say the bigger your network, right? The more opportunities they are. Because what happens is after a while, your network will just start looking out for you, right? You'll know someone who knows someone um, that can share an opportunity. Um, there may be an opportunity within your organization that someone in your network may know about that they may reach out to you and all of a sudden there's an opportunity. I give a great example. 
um, I leave it, I lead a team of directors uh, in the south part of the U.S. And uh, one of one of my uh, directors has an incredible reputation within the organization. I mean, he knows everybody. I mean, I mean, globally knows everybody. I, I mean, I was talking to a country president in Spain, and my director visited him this summer. I didn't even know about it. You know what I mean? It's like it was it was amazing. I'm like, God, oh, this guy knows everybody, right? So I got to be on my p's and q's because of like who this guy knows. And so all of a sudden he comes to me uh, about a month ago and says, hey, you know what? Um, hey, Quincy, I just want to let you know I have this opportunity where I can spend 30% of my time working on a global rotation in China and Australia. And it's 12 hours different in Australia, so I can do it at night. So I'm willing to do that and sacrifice that and spend and, or do it early in the morning before I do my day job. And I'm like, well, what did program is this? And how do you know about it, right? And it was interesting because he had been networked, has a strong reputation of strong work and people knew him, they know who he is and he knew, a, and he had a, a broad network globally. It exposed him to opportunities and career advancements that even his leaders didn't know about. Even my leader didn't know about it. We had to put a, we had to put a, uh, a call on just to explain what the program was. And it was great to see, but it's a good example of how exposure opens up opportunities, which is why I like to share that story. Um, and so I'll close just by saying, you know, exposure is really big. Um, and, and ask yourself, you know, as you're navigating your career and you're thinking about things, hey, you know what? Am I visible? Number one, right? Am I speaking up? Do people know me? Do people hear me? Um, do people know who I am within the organization? Do I have mentors? But more importantly, do I have a sponsor? And lastly, but uh, not least, definitely, is what's my reputation within the organization? Uh, and Sumner, you said it great, right? Sometimes you just got to ask for feedback because I'm pretty sure somebody's going to tell you. If you have a bad reputation, somebody will tell you. <laughs> and if nobody will tell you, probably you have a bad reputation. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it is what it is. Um, but to be honest, you know, ask yourself those things, seek advice from others. And more importantly, I think if you do those, it'll help you with this exposure piece of the pop puzzle. I'm going to pass it back over to you, Nicole. Wow. This was phenomenal. Like, all the mic drops that I was dropping over here was just crazy. So thank you, Terrence. Thank you, Sumner. Thank you, Quincy, for all the insight. We have some questions in the chat that I'm just going to throw out. And whoever wants to answer, please just do so. Um, so the first question is from Terry. How might you incorporate PI into a year-end assessment when you are building discussions, one-on-one -on -one discussions at the end of the year? I do a lot of them, so I'll take it if you want. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Sumner. Um, so per, per my discussion points, that is like one of the best opportunities to put in your research, to come prepared, to have your collateral precise, right? And to have a clear objective and goal in that discussion and in that process. And it's really, it's really a good opportunity to incorporate PI because Obviously, you're going to try to talk about all the good things that you've done and what your performance was, and that's sort of the easy part, right? Um, but as you talk about your development goals, about what you want to achieve, what other, how you want to grow and develop, you have to incorporate the perception or the image, right, and the exposure in that conversation. So, for example, hey, I'm getting ready to go into my year in performance. I've got all of my metrics, my stats, my business performance results. First point is, do you have them articulated in a way that is appealing to the eye, easy to read, and clearly distinguishes like it was above or at or above like performance objectives? So remember, a, a picture speaks a thousand words. So make sure that it's something compelling, that data that, that represents your performance. Um, you have to be somewhat clear about where you want to develop. And in that you can talk about if I would like to, you know, grow into role A or as a second line leader or whatever the function may be, 
can you tell me what the leadership perception is of me? In other words, talking about image, right? Do, are you an advocate, me, your boss, or do you do I have an advocate or you could talk about the advocate you have, right? So incorporating what Quincy is talking about. And then also, honestly, asking if, if, the, if the responses are mediocre or aren't meeting the goal and objective that you want in that meeting, be very specific with asks because it's your manager's job to create those opportunities to, to find pathways for you to develop. Um, so can you help me find a mentor or develop a, you know, an advocacy network? How would you recommend going about doing that? How have you achieved that as you're as a career professional in this organization, right? Is there someone else within the periphery or peripheral of our organization that I should speak to regarding these topics, right? So it, it's less about all, all the specifics all the time and more about being very deliberate about taking advantage of that opportunity and drawing out those things that you need to progress and inform your, your career and your plans. Like you can't, you can't happenstance that type of discussion. It has to be deliberate, you have an objective and you're, you're not leaving those conversations without what you need to do to progress and, and to grow further. Thank you, Sumner. <clears throat> Um, the next question is from Janice. Um, Sumner, she thinks she is your cousin because her mother's maiden name is Madden and they're from Arkansas. So she, you got Madden's all it. over. I don't know any in Arkansas, but. No, no. <laughs> all right. So the question is, anybody can answer. What's the best approach to gauge what you are good at and where are your gaps internally and from the perspective of others? I think you kind of spoke on that a little bit, but <clears throat> if you want to expound, say, for example, you have a manager that's not as forthcoming or maybe it's not as, you know, diverging any helpfulness, but how do you gauge what you're good at and where you are, where your gaps are internally and from the perspective of others? Terrence. So, I mean, I think that uh, uh, Quincy spoke to this um, from two perspectives. One, um, you got to ask for feedback. And then if you're saying that you have a manager that is not as forthcoming, right, um, in terms of providing their feedback, I think this is where having mentors and folks that are around you that are willing to just shoot, shoot it straight with you is really, really important. And so I think those two things are important. One, ask for the feedback. Uh, Sumner just mentioned it in his overview of your year-end review, right? Come prepared with some clear goals in mind and part of those those goals are asking questions about what your image is so that you can have some understanding of that and if your manager is not willing to, to give that to you and shoot you straight you got to find the individuals that are willing to do that and they they exist in the organization you just got to be really really deliberate about identifying who those individuals are yeah i like that yeah hey, okay the next what? question and, I, I was going to jump in i was going to say and you need to be open to taking the feedback there have been some times where you'll you'll get feedback, and it's if it's truly your manager or truly a mentor that is trustworthy that has your back, they may give you feedback you that you like. It's, it's tough to swallow, and we've all done that. And said either we had we've delivered it or we've received it, and 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 I think that taking that learning from it is a skill set in itself, right? And to me, I think that to me is a sign of good leadership um, and, and self-awareness. Um, so I think that that's important as well. I agree, I like that. Okay, the next question comes from Joy. Um, what advice would you give on maximizing your image and exposure in our ever increasingly more vir virtual world? So we're all working from home, we're all working remote. So how do we maximize our image and exposure? Yeah, I, I'll jump in on this one and uh, I'm sure some others may have um, something to say. Uh, so I think the biggest thing is, you know, now that we are living virtually is um, be very intentional um, around who you want to network with. Actually, I think it's easier a little bit because before I would be a sales rep, I'm out in the field, I kind of know just the people around me. Now I'm on the computer, I can look, I can look within the whole network. Like while I'm sitting here, if there's a meeting, I can peek over on LinkedIn and see that, you know, Sumner went to a HBCU. So we might joke around that afterwards. Like to me, I think that there's more information, 
right? And so utilize that um, LinkedIn, right? Um, utilize some of those things to kind of expand your network, right? Both internally and externally. Um, I also think that, um, you know, don't be afraid to just say, hey, you know what? Um, I'm going to reach out and, and get to know someone else outside of my circle and put some time on their calendar, get to know them, right? I, I had somebody put some time on a day. It was an intern, put some time on randomly. And it was great getting to know this person and more about their experience. But for them, they just were not afraid to do it, right? I think sometimes just not being afraid or thinking, hey, you know what? What are they going to think of me if I do this? Um, Sumner said it really well. Now, it would have been terrible if they just came to me and just had a bunch of questions, right? They actually came and it was well thought out. They knew exactly what they wanted to ask. You know, they talked about the business a little bit. They shared some of their acumen. So it made for a really great conversation. So I think some of those things are ways to kind of help navigate this kind of virtual space. Um, and then more importantly, when there are opportunities to meet live, NSN conference is great, right? I'll plug that. That's a great opportunity to go and meet, connect with people live. Anytime you get a chance to go to your home office, I would say go, right? There are opportunities to navigate internally there. So do things like that to help navigate your career as well. Thank you, Quincy. I'll just add to that. If you do have ever go home office, make sure you set up some appointments so you can meet with some people face to face when you get there. Okay. <clears throat> Don't just go without an agenda. Yeah. Um, the next point. Hey, Nicole, I just want to add on to that too. If you raise your hand for special projects, different opportunities, you'll maximize more opportunities to get to home office. Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so you need something? Throw your hand up. I'll do it. I'll do it. Can I do that? <laughs> Exactly. Okay, next question comes from Nisha. What suggestions do you have for finding and selecting a mentor, especially when you're new in your company, division, or role? So I was always told or it was always shared that you shouldn't ask someone to be a mentor. Sometimes it can just happen organically. So how do you go about finding and selecting a mentor when you're either new to a company, division, or role? So one, one of the things that uh, Sumner mentioned uh, as he was talking a little bit about image, right, is just having a level of awareness of those individuals that are doing things that you aspire to do and are doing those things well. And I know one of the things that's worked for me, um, and I was one of those individuals that Quincy talked about earlier in my career that thought if I just put my head down and I did the work and I did it at a really, really high level that everything would take care of itself. And going back to this pie concept, right, right? That's not the reality, right? And so when I finally looked up and I was a little bit hesitant, right, to build these relationships, one of the things that helped me is I started to look around and I started to look at those individuals that were doing the things that, that I aspired to do. And to the point that Quincy just made, I reached out to them and just started to ask them questions about, uh, the way that they went about doing their job, how did they actually get to where it was that they were at? And through that, my net was pretty wide at the beginning. That organic relationship that you talk about started to form. And then I started to find the individuals that I click clicked with and to the point that, uh, that uh, Quincy made earlier that I felt were trustworthy and were going to give it to me straight and really help me to actually uh, propel my career and move forward. So it's something that's worked for me. Um, I'm sure there's other thoughts and other comments as well. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. So for me, I look at it when I'm new to a company, I look at who has the juice, right? I have little slogans for everything. My, this one is who has the juice? Who has the juice means for me is who's visible. Remember I talked about who's visible, who's already being exposed and has exposure, right? If, if I'm looking and I'm, and I'm new to Sumner's team and I know that Nicole is on every project, right? And I see she's raising her hand, she's speaking up. If she's in California, I'm in, I'm in North Carolina, man, Nicole must have the juice. So I'm going to reach out to Nicole and say, you know what? I need to understand what Nicole is doing, how, how she's doing it. You know, she's not afraid to speak up. She's navigating the organization really well. And to me, I start thinking about those things very early when I'm new to an organization. Um, and so to me, that's one of the things I, I tend to do as well. I tend to think a lot of relationships do end up developing organically. But before you get to those organic relationships, there are a lot of them that end up just being friendships or colleagues. 
that they, you know, we just work together and you work well together. It's just, they may not be a mentorship. It may not match. It may not be a sponsorship and that's fine. At least you're visible because there are times in even those situations when your name comes up, even though it's not a mentor, it's not a sponsor, they still know you and they're talking positively about you behind the scenes. I think that's important. Yeah, and the only build I'd put on that, and I was going to put it on what Terrence said as well, is, you know, you can form an advisory panel, right? right? Just the way you just described, Quincy, which are multiple people, maybe not mentors, not all um, sponsors, right? But people to bounce ideas off, get feedback from. Um, and, you know, through that process, Terrence described, you might informally form a few people that you know, hey, they'll tell me what they really think. They're trying to achieve or have achieved like I want to, and I trust what their opinion is. And so an advisory panel, if you will, is also another way to, to get mentorship without necessarily having a quote unquote mentor. Thank you. Um, this has been a phenomenal one hour. I feel like it went by super fast, <laughs> um, but there were so many pearls in here. We didn't even get a chance to get to all the questions, but we can take some of these questions back and I can send out an email and see if we can get some responses from you. I can share back with the Innocent LA chapter. But I just wanna say thank you so much to Terrence Powell, Quincy Lee, Sumner Madden, and Darian Stevens and Therese and Miles just for making this a phenomenal first virtual AZ sponsor NSN chapter event, um, talking about performance image exposure. I hope you guys have, are working on building your whole pie and empowering yourself so that your organi organizational game is on point. So thank you all for a wonderful webcast. Thank you for being here and have a wonderful night. Thank you.